today the sorted built-in function in Python. So let's start with a look at the docs. Sorted takes three arguments, a mandatory iterable argument, and an optional key and reverse arguments. And it's worth noting that sorted will always return a new list. So we're taking in an iterable and we're getting back a list. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I want to mention is that sorted takes iterables. So if you pass a string, it's going to consider that an iterable. It's going to split that up before returning it as a list. Now let's look at sorting lists of strings. So I've created a list here called A, and we can pass that to sorted and see that that's been sorted alphabetically A, B, C. Now what happens if I add an uppercase C on here? Well, when we pass that to sorted, that uppercase is going to come before the lowercase letters. And the reason for that is if you look at an ASCII table, um, uppercase actually comes before lowercase. And even before uppercase comes uh, the numbers 0 through 10, as well as exclamation marks, money signs, etc. So if we added that to our list, let's add maybe an uh, exclamation mark. When we go to sort that, the exclamation mark is going to come first. So basically, strings are going to be sorted by their ASCII values. So it may be a little unintuitive and something to keep an eye on. Now let's look at sorting lists of numbers. So let's say we had a list 153 here. If we pass that to sorted, um, we're going to get that sorted 135, as you might expect. And if we added on our list some negative values, um, when we go to sort that, those negative values will be to the left. Those will be the first values. Still fairly intuitive. Now maybe we can look at adding the keys here. So what if we did key equals ABS? Well, now when we sort it, that negative 10 is uh, furthest to the right because it's looking at the absolute values. So let's continue a discussion of the keys. I created another list of strings of which they're all of different lengths. And if we pass this to the sorted function normally, uh, it's going to sort that alphabetically. But if we pass key equals len here, then it's going to sort it by the length, lowest first. So now it's sorted 2, 3, 4 in terms of length. So I've created another list of strings, A, B, C, Z. And normally, if we pass that to sorted, uh, it's going to take ASCII into consideration and sort the uppercase values first. But if we did sorted, where key equals string dot lower, then it's going to basically treat all the values as if they were lowercase and sort them that way. And that's why you see a good alphabetical order A, B, C, Z. And you could do string dot upper. And I guess same thing. It's still comparing them the same way. Worth noting, using string dot upper or string dot lower is a great way to deal with case insensitivity. So just as a recap of using the key optional argument, um, we've looked at doing it with the absolute and numbers. Uh, we've looked at doing it with len and strings. And we've looked at doing it with string.upper and string.lower. Now, it's worth mentioning if you had uh, a list of strings and you tried to use ABS or something, uh, that's not going to work because those types aren't compatible. Um, so there's a lot of options when it comes to using the key um, there's examples out there using the lambda function, things like that. You can get really creative with it, especially when your iterable is a dictionary. So lots of options out there for you. Okay, and the last optional argument is reverse equals true. So normally when we sort a list, it's alphabetical and according to ASCII. And if we add reverse equals true here, it's just going to give you that opposite result. And if we had reverse equals false, which is the default, that's going to be the same as that first list. Same kind of thing with numbers. Uh, let's just create a quick list here, 153, uh, sorted B135, and reverse equals true, 531. So reverse is pretty intuitive. 
All right, so we've looked at iterables. We've looked at keys and different options there. We've looked at reverse equals true and false. So I guess at this point in time, all I can say is thanks for watching.